Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am prepping for another 200 amp service upgrade with portable generator wiring. Uh, this is going to be a little different video. This is going to be a mast service. What that means is the, um, the, the, the top side of the meter, the riser, is going to be a two inch galvanized conduit. And we're going to go through a soffit. We're going to go approximately two feet higher than the roof line and the service head will be there. And then we'll attach the service drop to the service mast, the riser mast. Uh, so this is a unique job. Uh, it's nearby here. I'm in Point Pleasant. I'm at my house today. Um, we're gonna go over there later on and do the grounding for the water ground electrode and also drive the two ground rods, get a little head start for tomorrow. All right, so this is a service mast kit. And since we're going through that soffit, we have to put in this flange that'll go underneath the roofing to keep the water from going through the penetration in the roof that's already there. So I'm hoping I can reuse that hole that's there. And of course this gasket goes over it like this to keep it weather tight. Alrighty. And then this piece, I don't know what we call it, but this gets attached to the service riser mast and the ground wire will get suspended around this porcelain collar right here. Of course, these are the two straps for the rigid. And of course we have the service head right here. The service set comes undone with this set screw right here. So we take the top off, put the, put the service cap on top of the conduit, run the wires, and then take these knockouts out and run the uh, conductors through here. So these are the butt splices that I use to tie in the service drop to the new service entrance conductors. And as you can see, it's a channel lock. I believe that's a 5 16 lug right there. And inside here, you'll stick the wire in this way and stick the wire in this way, and tighten down these lugs, go over it with some rubber tape, and then go over it with vinyl electrical tape and call it a day. main breaker's on right now. Okay, just pretend this is an energized panel. The main breaker is on, but the generator breaker cannot be turned on because of the interlock that's in its way. All right, but now you see as I turn this off, I'm able to slide the interlock up, allowing the generator breaker to turn on. And that's the manual interlock transfer switch for portable generator wiring. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching this video.
we're gonna be doing it's Thursday the day before I'm gonna be doing I'm just setting up I'm gonna do some grounding today we're gonna hit the copper water pipe with the right size grounding electro conductor which will be number two aluminum and then we're also gonna drive some ground rods on the other side of the house because here we have the sidewalk so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that grounding electro conductor to the water pipe to the copper water main and then from there we're gonna bridge to the ground rods on the outside of the house on the other side reason why we're gonna do that like I said is because this is a sidewalk over there and on that side it's a uh, lawn so it'll be easy to drive those ground rods in so stick around so I've really lucked out in the past few jobs the past few weeks here because um, I'm able to back up my truck into the driveway and park next to the work which makes things a lot easier I work by myself if you didn't know that so closer I am to the work the better off I am so I just drove those two ground rods and I think my battery died before I showed the attachment of the copper wire to them uh, but I'm down here in the basement and I'm using my level for a plumb line and I'm marking where I'm going to put my straps so that they're in a nice straight line and look uh, like they're done in a workmanlike manner so here's a little info on the grounding electro system required by the National Electric Code. If you're interested, you should hit pause and read this entire section. So here I'm assembling the water ground clamps and attaching them to the copper water pipes. The clamp that we're looking at here where I'm tightening down is the customer side. To the left of that meter on the top is the utility side. And the intent of the National Electric Code for grounding is to hit both sides. And in the event that the meter is removed for whatever reason, the copper water piping, metal water piping system throughout the house is still grounded to the electrical system, limiting potential for voltage to flow. If you have any questions on that, leave them in the comments. I'm sure you do, and I'd love to hear them and hear any of your feedback. That'd be great. The idea here is the same as it is at the water meter. So in comes a cold water pipe into the water heater and out goes another hot water pipe. And so these two pipes are not metallically bonded unless we put this jumper in from the cold pipe to the hot pipe 
and then each of the hot pipes in the house are now also are also grounded to the system so that's what the jumper is for at your water heater to jump your hot water pipe and your cold water pipe this solidifies the completion of a grounding system so that all the metal water piping systems as required by the code are grounded to the electrical system limiting potential for voltage to flow on those said pipes this existing circuit panel had uh, about 14 circuits I believe uh, they were all single poles there was no double pole circuits throughout the whole house no central air conditioning um, no heaters, no electric water heaters, all single pole circuit breakers. So all I had to bring with me were 15 amp and 20 amp single pole breakers. Now I'm going to be adding a 60 amp double pole breaker for a hot tub that we're installing in the backyard, which is why we're updating the service to begin with. So this is a pretty simple panel. This is a flush mount panel, which means it's between two wall studs framed up, framing of the house. Uh, we call that a flush mount. Uh, this one's kind of simple in my opinion um, because this is all Romex wire. It's all non-metallic sheet cable, no BX cables except for the MC cable there down at the bottom, which of course was added later, not original to the house. Remove the lock nuts and pull the panel out and we're on to the next step. So here in New Jersey, it's routine to pull a permit, and you can't pull a permit unless you have an electrical license. And when you need to disconnect the power to make your repair or your upgrade, with the license, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to cut out and then cut back in when you're done making your repair or when you're done making your upgrade. That's the agreement here in New Jersey. Disconnecting a service drop is not easy work. I've been trained how to do this and I've done this many times and the nylon rope is actually attached to a vent pipe on the roof uh, to avoid the drop from laying in the street. It's important to cut away this section of the service riser so that when I go downstairs or when I go back down the ladder in a minute here and detach the meter uh, so the pipe can come out in one piece. So I'm sure there's many ways to do this job, but the easiest way I found to do this is to set up the flange, use the existing hole, and then push the conduit down through the soffit until it gets to the top of the meter. And then I, what I did was I got down off the ladder and I got down by the meter, and sure enough, it was on top of the meter. 
So you'll see what I do is I pull the screws out of the meter. So the meter comes out a little bit with a little bit of play. Now I'm able to, to align the threaded conduit into the hub of the meter. At this point, I just get started on getting the threads into the hub. And um, eventually I'll get three or four threads in by hand and I'll go up on top on the ladder and uh, use a set of large channel locks to tighten it down a couple more turns inside the hub. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put the main breaker enclosure right up against where that nipple is and I'll make a mark right at the center of that nipple on the enclosure so I know exactly where to make my two inch hole for the nipple. And uh, you'll see I'll use the speed square here to get a nice point of reference, a nice straight line, so that I can get a nice, accurate center point to make my two inch hole for the nipple. I'm using the two inch hole saw, a carbon hole saw made by Greenlee, it comes in a kit. Fantastic, it works great. After I put on the standard two inch lock nut, I'm installing what's known as a plastic bonding bushing right here. I'm sorry, this is a metal bonding bushing. And what this does is we're gonna run a wire from that lug to the equipment grounding terminal and that will bond that steel service nipple. That bonds the meter to the enclosure for the 200 amp panel. And also it bonds the steel nipple between the two. So everything's bonded. So now you can see why I took out the sheetrock above the panel there. Uh, you just, anytime you have wires in a flush mount panel like here, um, you could try to stick them in there without doing the sheetrock. Uh, it wasn't that big a deal to take the sheetrock apart. I had some circuits we we're gonna be running later on. In fact, I was just there the other day doing the um, hot tub installation. So, and then once I'm done here, uh, we'll put that piece back on and uh, just be a rough patch above the panel, which is uh, normal for a job, an installation like this, uh, when you're upgrading a flush mount panel. You definitely need some room just to work. So each of these branch circuits are copper. Uh, they're either 14 gauge or 12 gauge, 14 two or 12 two. Um, like I said before, or previously, these are, maybe I said it later and I'm editing this not in the order that you're seeing it um <clears throat> each of these wires are um there's no there's no two pole circuit breakers in this whole house so uh they're they got gas heat and uh no major appliances that are electric at the time of this recording i'm also using black button connectors as my romex connectors here so as soon as i got all my home runs inside the enclosure I begin to strip back all of the sheathing and then I'll separate the hot conductors from the neutral conductors from the ground conductors and uh, I'll terminate them the equipment grounding conductors first and then all of my neutral conductors and then all my ungrounded live conductors that'll be going to circuit breakers uh, that's one of the last steps I do the last step in this whole thing is connecting the uh, the feeders the service entrance conductors from the meter to the main breaker panel that's so I believe there was a 14 different branch circuits that were existing in here, and we're going to add a few. We're going to add the portable generator uh, main disconnect, and then we're going to be adding a 60 amp 
circuit for a hot tub that we're doing, and then another two-pole um, surge protector device that plugs right on to the uh, bus bar and provides protection to the whole house. So here in New Jersey, we are still on the National Electric Code 2017. So the 2020 um, NEC was updated to provide surge protection anytime I do a job like this, like a service upgrade or a new service. So although it wasn't required here, this was an added feature to this uh, particular job that we did. So the two pole surge protector device does the whole house and each circuit inside the panel. Okay, so now obviously um, bringing these service entrance inductors directly into the terminal up above it, almost impossible just because of the size of the conductor. So obviously I didn't, if I could choose not to put the, the knockout there, I would have. However, when you have a meter already knocked out on the other side, you're not going to move that because I got siding, I got J channel around it. So this is what I was presented with and this is what I had to do. This is not my ideal design to do those loops to go into the terminals but i didn't have much of a choice here on the service upgrade and people were living in the house so you get there in the morning you turn the power off you tell people the power is going to be back on a certain amount of time it's got to be back on at that time because people are depending on that nobody wants to be told one thing that you're going to do and then you don't do it so you tell people you're going to do something you have to do it if you're in business that's a, that's in, that's my opinion that's what i've learned you tell somebody you stick to their word and uh, you do it right the first time and everybody knows you're all on the same page and people trust you. Uh, that's a big part of it because you keep your word on what you say you're going to do. Okay, so what you don't see is me drilling the hole on the outside of the um, house for the inlet, the inlet box for the portable generator wiring. But this is the, uh, the wire that goes to that inlet box for the portable generator wiring. I think one of my subscribers wanted to see how that white connector got installed. Well, there you go. That's it. Okay, so this is for the portable generator wiring. There's that white connector we just slipped on. You might want to tape the end right there so you get the connector on to slide over the sheeting because sometimes it likes to get caught up on that sheeting. Push it down and then just snap it into place. That's that. And here I had to make this. very hot so the sheathing heats up it's loose and it wants to peel off as I'm sliding the cable through the connector so I'll tape it up here to keep it rigid and that should do the trick and it did see What I'm doing here is I'm caulking the hole where the wire protrudes through the house. This will prevent any uh, water or any kind of condensation from getting into that hole and into the cavity beneath the electrical panel on the inside of the house. I like to use these two and a half corrosion resistant um, Phillip head screws, exterior screws. The galvanize and that's what I use outside. I also have uh, stainless steel on my truck, but I don't think that's necessary here. But the closer I get to the uh, Atlantic Ocean and the lagoons in the in the town that I live in here in Point Pleasant, um, 
will have to use more stainless steel rather than the corrosion resistant just to safeguard the uh, the, the salty air it does uh, it wreaks havoc in short towns this portable generator system that I'm putting in is rated at 30 amps at 240 volts so simple Ohm's law theory here just you multiply your amps times your volts and you'll get 7200 watts and that's how my, that's the amount of power that um, the generator can send from the cord on the generator through this inlet box to the panel on the inside is 7200 watts of course a good design generator will have their own overcurrent protection built right in via circuit breakers with a push button uh, but this system right here is good for up to 7200 watts so that's 7.2 kw or kilowatts for this portable generator wiring setup I would suggest if you're thinking about uh, having this wire, this wiring done and this work done for a connection to a portable generator and you're not sure the size generator should get, I would start with a minimum 6,500 watt generator. Um, a little bit more on the startup right there. 6,500 watts is below that 7,200 watt uh, threshold for this system that could handle it. Uh, but 6,500 watts does a lot of things. It'll do your kids... Uh, Video games, their iPads, the charger, obviously to charge your phone, your computer. You could set up, um, if you have a boiler, you could set up your heat. If you have um, forced air, you, it'll, it'll take care of your furnace. Um, it won't do your central air conditioning. But I would start at 6,500. And I would suggest even getting a, uh, an electric start and just charging that battery. So if you're not home uh, and somebody who's not that strong can't start a generator, electric start just has a push button. Anyhow, this is me on top of the roof here on the service mast <clears throat> making a connection. Obviously, the power company is going to come back and make the final termination. Uh, that loop that's on that grounded leg, um, I think you got to get a special machine to undo that. I wasn't ready to play with that and hold on to the live service drop while I'm standing on this guy's roof. Uh, so I rigged up something here with the, um, with the hook that I do have on my mast. Uh, until the service until the utility company jcp and l can come out and uh and make that final connection and they can also re-splice this if they choose to um, but i'm using the uh the butt splices i showed earlier in the video uh, to make this connection uh, if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button uh, that does the channel a lot of good also hit that like button and if you're so inclined to hit that notification bell it would be greatly appreciated Thanks for coming around and uh, watching this video, and I hope you've learned something. And if you'd like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.
You wouldn't believe the trouble I had with this meter enclosure. The, uh, the prongs that accept the meter itself just weren't centered. So here it was energized and I had to manipulate them so I can get that meter in, but all's well. All's, all's good and ended well. So turn the main breaker on and uh, there was power and then each individual circuit breaker after that. And uh, that's the end of this uh, video. So thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you on the next one.